Welcome to the Spire Girls podcast, the self-publishing podcast for authors. You're in the right place for the best writing, marketing and publishing advice, plus interviews with industry experts and best-selling authors. I'm Cheryl Phipps. I'm Shara Barrett. I'm Wendy Vanna. And I'm Trudy J. And welcome to the Spire Girls podcast. Welcome. Hello. Welcome. welcome. And this and a special week, welcome. <laughs> yes, this week we have a very special guest. We've got Mark Dawson on the show with us. Hello. Again, welcome hey, back. Hi. Hi. Hello. Hey. Now, for anyone, it's been who a while. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. For anyone who doesn't know who Mark is, Wendy's going to give me a quick, going to give us a quick bio. But I do have to say, you'd have to be living under a rock. I was going to say, know. where have you been? <laughs> Mark is. But anyway, yeah. we'll get, we'll we get actually bio. we met Mark many years ago, Cheryl and I in Florida. Um, when we interviewed him there and we were just having a chat about how sick we were and Mark took over the whole interview. So we are like, <laughs> so we're the same again, you know. Uh, so Mark Dawson is an award-nominated USA Today bestseller with more than 40 books published and millions of copies downloaded in multiple countries and languages. As well as writing, he also teaches other authors how to self-publish through self-publishing through the self-publishing show podcast and his well-known courses, including advertising for authors and self-publishing launchpad. You can find out more about these at selfpublishingformula.com. Welcome, Mark. Thank you. Nice to be here. (laughs) So our topic is going to be Facebook ads and hopefully kind of the fixes and things that you could look at if maybe a Facebook Mm -hmm. ad isn't working and some of the stats that you can kind of look at to kind of assess how they're going and what you need to be looking at um so the idea is that maybe you've you've already managed to get an ad up you've managed to figure out how to put an image in and and write some text and you've um got the audience sorted or whatever and then you're sitting back and waiting for it to work and nothing's happening (laughs) you're going oh my god what do i do (laughs) (laughs) so what what is the first thing you would do mark well i've been there before when i when i started advertising uh going to say six years ago maybe even seven years ago now i i um i don't know why i, I why i figured out it'd be a good idea to drive facebook ads why someone persuaded me that it was and i tried to drive traffic to a kindle unlimited book um to try and get some page reads and it just didn't it didn't work i couldn't i couldn't get it to uh perform in a way that i wanted i couldn't really i didn't have to track the effectiveness on both sides of the ad so i could see what facebook was telling me and i could see what amazon was telling me but i couldn't marry them up so it, it was very difficult to, to work out whether the ad was working or not. Um, and it was very, very difficult with KU in those days. A little easier now, but still tricky. But I I kind of stopped and then I kind of sat down and looked at what I was doing and tried to figure out a way to make it better. Um, and I um, thought I tried selling ads to sell books directly rather than trying to drive page reads. And the kind of Damascene moment for me was figuring out how to um, use affiliate tracking to to complete the equation so i could see facebook would tell me how much i was spending on each click amazon would then tell me how many sales that ad or those clicks were were generating and once i had both sides of the equation um it was easy then to see that facebook ads were actually working very very well i mean exceptionally well in those days i remember um going to basically because i wasn't confident in my maths so i thought i must have got something wrong i went to my accountant and said i think these ads are making me a 500 percent return Wow. What should I do? And, and he, he kind of he looked at he, exactly. He looked at the numbers and he said, "Can I invest in your business, please?" Um, and <laughs> it's no, it's not. And I'm kind of preempting one of your questions. I think you might ask me. It isn't as effective as that these days. That that was the kind of the golden eight, like an ATM in those days. You'd put money in. It wasn't an ATM because it's like a reverse ATM. It's just kind of spitting money out. That I that wasn't. That it was just generating. So that was. Um, fairly remarkable um not not as easy now um partly there's loads of reasons for that partly because some idiot made a facebook course telling other authors how to do it um <laughs> that, you know we've all done do it that. You know, that <laughs> so all on you yeah that's partly my fault i mean uh, apart from anything else it's more authors are on the platform more advertisers generally on the platform and it is it is more competitive now so you know clicks that you could get for pennies in 2018 are probably going to cost you 50 or 60 pennies these days so that does make it a lot more difficult to make those ads work but it's definitely not impossible um and um you know i i see i have a fairly privileged view of this because i i, I kind of you know i'm involved in teaching well over fourteen thousand authors now through all of our, our main courses so i see a lot of uh, authors experimenting with facebook ads some doing well others not doing well um, and 
I see people say fairly regularly, there's always something that Facebook ads are now dead. They don't work anymore. It is just, it's bullshit, basically. They, they, oh, they, they're they challenging, definitely. Um, but they absolutely do work. Um, as long as you understand that it's going to require testing, um, that we, we always did, um, and that it's going to be, it's not a magic button. Uh, it's not, you know, it, it isn't a question of running the ads and waiting for the sales to come. It does take work, but that's fine. You know, I'm not afraid of work and we shouldn't be. Um Provided you you know you're realistic about that, then yeah, it is definitely possible to make Facebook ads work. And you just I, actually, I was recording a video today um, for we're doing a little kind of ads challenge at the moment. Uh, we've got the expedition in SPF, and um, I was as the one I was doing today was about researching other people's ads, so using the Facebook ads library to see what other authors are doing. And there were um, some authors. If I think I found two indies who are in the top ten at the moment in uh, Amazon.com, and they're both running dozens of facebook ads so you know there's if you, if you think about what you're in, in trying to assess whether an ad is working for somebody else it's a good idea to see if they're selling and if they're mm. if they're selling and they're running a lot of ads it's not unreasonable to suggest that at least a f- component of that success is probably because they're running lots of ads mm. so you know there you go yeah they, they do work but it's yeah it's um it's it's a bit more challenging than it was five years ago yeah. So it, it, does, does how you're um, doing your ads, has that changed dramatically over time as well? Like um, how long, you know, mm. with the change in um, getting the reach and the costing and the stuff. So is, is that changed as well, the way you're setting your ads up? Not really. The, the, the kind of the nuts and bone, bones of so nuts, and bones, nuts and bolts of the ads are, are fairly similar. Um I think you need to be a bit more creative when it comes to targeting these days than than yeah. than used to be the case. I mean, interest targeting. So for those who don't know, it's where you tell you tell Facebook you want to show your ad to people it knows have liked the pages of other authors. So for me, Lee Child, for example, James Patterson, David Badacci. In in the in the early days, there were lots and lots of interests. Um, they have, for reasons I'm still not completely clear about, made it they removed some of the interests, not all of them by any means. One of the questions I get quite a lot of complaints actually from from authors is that they'll be like, I can't target mm. X. You can't target me, for example. I'm not a targetable um interest on Facebook, despite having fifty thousand um people who like my page or something like like that, but you can't target me. Um and it's become more, you know, those were always the ease that they felt like the easiest targeting options, but they they were probably never the best. They're just the easy ones. Um and the, the kind of the real juice now is in the uh, things like lookalike audiences um, running engagement campaigns and then retargeting those who, in, who engaged with that ad, running video campaigns and then retargeting people who watched the videos and things like that. So it, it's a little bit more technical now. Um, and also trusting trusting Facebook's algorithm, which, you know, sometimes can feel a bit of a crapshoot, but it's getting much, much better now. And you can tell, you can tell it, look, I want to generate a lookalike audience based on my mailing list. So you, you take your mailing list of, say, a thousand names, email addresses, feed it into Facebook. Facebook then looks at those email addresses and matches them with email addresses that it has. So it's able to maybe, maybe of that thousand, maybe 300, it can match. It will take those 300 and it will look for commonalities in the profile and behaviors of those people. And then it will build you an audience uh, of maybe two or 3 million based on people who share those traits. And that's really powerful. And you can use that as a base and then you can start to filter that a bit with other interests and things. Um, so it's it's not as easy as just kind of going, right, I'm going to target Lee Child now and wait for the, the sales to roll in. You have to be a bit more savvy about it. But the good news is if you're prepared to put the work in, lots of authors are not now prepared to put the work in. And so it's a little easier to to get the, yeah, the kind of the yeah. really relevant clicks. Yeah. Yeah. Do you think it's genre specific? Like like it works really well for thriller, but not for um it's know? definitely it, uh, there are um there are variations. Um so I think some do better than others. Romance does very well. Um and especially in those, you know, if if you've got a that's just a com that's a common theme. I mean, the romance readers, as we all know, are exceptionally voracious and especially in things and like awesome. KU where they can and awesome, absolutely. No, I I love <laughs> I love romance readers. I actually love romance authors because I think as I, I mentioned to someone else the other day, I, I follow lots of romance authors because almost always they're they're ahead of everybody else. Mm-hmm. So I've learned lots of stuff from, you know, some of the people like Lucy Score, actually. Lucy who who took our course 
way way back when she was living with her husband Tim um in you know and, and doing a job she hated Lucy Scores now is one of the biggest authors in the world now mm-hmm. um in terms of sales on, on Amazon you just look right now she's got a book is number five and number 10 um and you know she's got nearly a hundred thousand reviews of of her last book um mm-hmm. and um Lucy bless her will say you know she credits a lot of her success with taking the ads for authors course now obviously that's very flattering and it's also slightly inaccurate because she's a really good writer they both work really really hard and they deserve everything that they've been able to achieve but you know it's i've and i learned things from her now so you know she's done things with um ways to build her mailing list by using things like exclusive epilogues i'd never heard of anyone doing that before and and she's got you know two hundred thousand on her on her list (laughs) <laughs> it's, it's, it's a really on, good Mark. idea <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah no it's a fantastic idea and we learned it from her yeah 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 no she's yeah. brilliant no, and lucy yeah, and, and tim are both really really great and, and lovely people too so you know yeah. i don't I, I i'm chuffed for both of them yeah very she does, the, the amazing thing with lucy is that she's really really good with reader engagement like her facebook group she is so, oh she's she yeah. connects yeah. with people so mm. so well yeah. Um, I think that's awesome. And I always remember that about you, Mark, saying that you, in the early days anyway, you were always replying to every e- email. Uh, I still do. Sent you. Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. So I feel that kind of thing. I mean, that's, yeah, that's a, I, yeah, I still do. I, I think, yeah, it's important because if you just think about it, I mean, it does take time. And I've kind of thought, you know, I can't really hand it off because it would feel really dishonest if someone else was writing my emails. Um, so I can't do that. But if you think about it, you know, it takes, it takes five minutes to, to write a nice reply to someone who's taken the time to email you. But if they then tell their friend that this mm. author they love has written back to them, maybe then they tell their friend that they heard about this author that their friend loved who wrote back to them. Before you know it, you've got like a cascade. Mm. Um, it's impossible to quantify, but it just, you know, I think putting that kind of good stuff out, you're going to get some of it going back again. Yeah, mm. yeah, 100%. I think so. So do you use your um, Facebook ads to target email signups, getting people to sign I up? I do, yeah. Definitely, yeah. And that works quite well for you? Yeah. So, I mean, I'm running, I mean, fairly standard. I'll run ads to um, um, to, to build the list all the time, maybe 10 or $20 a day, depending on what I'm doing. Uh, and just, I don't even really monitor those. They just kind of chug away. They go and they send them into MailChimp. MailChimp sends the book out. You know, they occasionally, over time, if I've got enough data, I'll look at to, look to see whether I think they are, um reacting in a way that makes those ads profitable but i, I think they are um mm-hmm. and I'm, actually tomorrow i'm going to run because i'm fairly big in germany now it's my big uh, big kind of um, market that's been really good to me um, i'm going to start running some um some ads targeting our readers who might like the a free novella that i've got in german for them and then of course the the idea is it's a prequel for the milton series so if they like that yeah. one then there's 20 books they can enjoy after that yeah. So have you got an email newsletter in Germany as well? Yeah. German. Yeah. German. Yeah. German, 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 yeah. I do, yeah. And don't don't speak a word of German, which is challenging, but you know, <laughs> yeah. I was gonna say it's so hard. I've just translated this year and last year and man, I just it's a struggle. It is you need good people. That's the, the bottom line is, you know. Yeah. Mm. And I um actually we've got um speak to Bella Andre, who you, I'm sure you know. Um and Bella is coming she's gonna be speaking, we think, at our conference in June. And oh. um she's she's doing really well with translation germany i i've nailed germany i'm good at that but she's doing really well in, in france italy and spain which i have struggled with so um, i'm i'm gonna be looking at doing having another go at that market but mm. i'll speak to bella and see what again listen to the romance authors I'll, I'll see what bella's doing and i'll just yeah. copy that and she's another person who is awesome in terms of her connection with people like yeah that's another like yeah just think of all these big names i honestly think that that's the one of the i think gen- generally i think that's that's a thing in the in the community there are obviously there are, there are some people i might not like hanging out with quite as much but generally um and like 99 percent of people are lovely um and you know that's mm. that's I have, it's lovely to go to conferences and just hang out with other writers who get what you do exactly yeah. I don't somebody think listening to this um just a question that i have as a listener <laughs> um for the german ads mark do you translate them or are they in english no, you definitely got to translate them. Mm-hmm. Yeah, okay. absolutely. So that's that's the, if you're thinking about getting into translations, what, when you when you find a translator, you should probably negotiate a rate for just stuff yeah. that you won't even you won't even anticipate. So, for example, um, so there's the ad itself, copy, headline, all of that kind of stuff. You probably also, if you're going to do a lead generation ad, you need text on the on the actual lead form mm-hmm. that needs to be in German. Um, 
Then there's the there's the mailing list. That's all got to be in German. So there is there's a, there's more than you think. And I've been mm-hmm. caught a number of times by you know even things like titles. I kind of get a book translated, then I realise that the title needs to change. Mm-hmm. I'm like shit. I I don't speak German. What am I going to do? So you have to kind yeah. of get the advice of the translator as to what would be a good title for that book now. Yeah. And reviews, I suppose, is another thing. You need a few of those translated. Uh, you could well actually Amazon. It's well, translating them the reviews that you're seeing. Mm-hmm. Um, there's plenty of plugins now that will translate web pages really quickly. So, mm-hmm. I mean, um, both Chrome and and uh, Safari have native translation that will just turn it into English, which mm-hmm. you know makes it a lot easier. Yeah, yeah, yeah okay. for sure. Awesome. Um, can I just ask uh, when you're doing ads, uh, just heading back to Facebook ads, do you use the book cover image always? If no, you're... not no. Actually, rarely. I I usually have an abstract image, okay. but that again, that's. I mean, I'm not. There is no one. I wouldn't recommend that for everyone. I wouldn't even recommend that for everyone in my genre. I think it is a question of testing and just seeing what works for you. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, some. If you look at some, just I mean, it's worth looking on the Facebook ads library and seeing what other authors are doing. So I've done a bit of that today, just because I'm preparing for some <laughs> stuff that I'm teaching, and none of them used they're all romance. Um, well, I think yes, they were all romance that I was looking at, and they none of them used the cover. It was all kind of, oh, that's wow. you know, because that's kind of the opposite blue. of what I've seen previously in romance. Mm. So is that maybe just a developing thing where the they... possibly, yeah, and it may only be those ones I just randomly picked five people who were, weren't doing covers. Um, mm-hmm. But it's I would recommend testing both, run a run a split test, and see which one does better, and then mm-hmm. do more of that one. Yeah. 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 Okay. That's interesting. So let's yeah. maybe talk through some of the other things that if, if you're Facebook, let's get right back to the actual topic instead of <laughs> <you know>. um, <laughs> so if you've got a Facebook ad and it's and it's not working. So first of all, how do you tell it's not working? Can we still use affiliate links via Amazon to on the ads? Or you can do you can. I mean the thing is that, that those it's always been against the terms of service. So you know, everyone everyone needs to know that uh, in terms of the affiliate terms of service. So and it's not actually necessary anymore because Amazon has Amazon attribution now, which has been in beta for about three years. I've I've known about it, but they've only recently rolled it out. So what that does is it gives you a, a tracking link that will then provide you with with sales data, which is what all I wanted. The I didn't care about the affiliate income you can make. I, I would very happily have gone like, I don't want the Amazon take. I don't, I'm not interested. I just want the data. Um, mm. And so that there is a way to do that now uh, without having to do an affiliate link, which is very helpful. So um, yeah, I mean, if, if the ad's not working, the most, it's very easy to get kind of bogged down with all of the metrics that Amazon provides, not Amazon, Facebook provides and kind of think, well, my, Cost per click is a little bit high. My 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 um so click through rate. So what is my cost per click? Like if I'm looking at it my, do, it doesn't. There isn't. There isn't really. I can't give you an answer for that because it varies from author to author, genre to genre, country to country. So I would say it's if you start getting above in any country, if you start getting above a dollar a click, then that's almost certainly going to be making you a loss mm-hmm. unless your ads convert at like an insane rate that's almost certainly going to make you a loss mm-hmm. the most important metric is are you making money mm-hmm. right that, that is in both amazon ads and facebook ads um you need to know whether the ad is making you money or not and it doesn't just mean another mistake people make is they'll look at the one book they're advertising and think well this i made you know three three dollars 79 every time i sell this book and this ad, or, or the number of clicks I needed, to, I, I had to have to sell one of those books for cost me five dollars. That sounds very much like on the face of it, you just lost one dollar thirty. But you probably, if you've got more books, you probably haven't. So, um, read through is one of the most um, is probably the most important number you need to understand. And by that, I mean, uh, think of yourself as a reader, and you know, I think of. I, I think of my, you know, as a reader for me, if if um I I see a series that I like and I read the first one, I'll probably read, well I'll read all if I like it, I'll read all of them. So um you need to work out on average how many books does your kind of typical reader sent to the first book by way of an ad then go on to consume, and if you know if if that you would cost if it's costing you five dollars to make a sale of that first book, but in, you've got a twenty deep series like me. And you think your read through on average is about ten to fifteen dollars? You've probably made 
five to ten dollars rather than lost 139 so it would be crazy to switch that out off because it's almost certainly profitable mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. so that's what you've got to remember and and there's lots of um ways out there to calculate your read through there's i know there's mm -hmm. a, a calculator in your ads and I, there's other people who have them around the place so that's an important yep. metric i guess is the point yeah. Yes, ab absolutely. And I mean, we in the in the uh, Facebook course, well, actually in the, in the ad sources course. So this is applicable to all ads. It's not just Facebook. Mm -hmm. um, there's a there's a spreadsheet that we use that kind of gives a very rough idea yeah. of what that might be. And also, it's worth noting if you're in KU, you can effectively run that twice because you've got mm -hmm. your ad is serving to two distinct audiences. So you don't you're not just looking at sales. You're also looking at, at reads, yeah. um, which you know is probably going to be forty percent or more of your of your of your revenue depending on what genre you're in mm. can i ask a silly question are you still in ku are you yes i am yeah yeah, yeah i've been in and out tw uh, twice i think i was in for ku one and then uh, people were getting bonuses and i wasn't so i got a bit petulant and left through my toys at the time and left then i saw authors who i knew i i you know i was kind of similar authors to me were, were absolutely crushing it in ku two. so i went back again um, and I think I put five books in to start with thinking I would just test it and they immediately went nuts. Um, and, um, it's probably three years ago now. So I, I, I went all, all in again very quickly. Um, and yeah, that, for me, that that's fine. I mean, I, the, there's, there's all kinds of things when it comes to being exclusive or wide, that is a very personal decision of author to author. It depends on, you know, politics, ethics, um you know your, your views on monopolies whether they're good things or bad things you know mm. it's it's there's no right answer but mm. i look at everything what's going to make me the most money and yeah. and that for me that has but i but i love i love the other stores you know I've, yeah. i know people who work for apple and and kobo and google and i think they're all great but for me personally i, I do a little bit better in, in amazon mm. so if you were targeting face mm. sorry if you were targeting facebook ads would you do them to each store Yes, definitely. Okay. Yeah, not you wouldn't bundle them up. Well, you you kind of you kind of have to because you got to you need a destination link at the end okay. of the ad. So unless you're sending it to a landing page which has those links there, which I wouldn't really recommend. Not 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 usually anyway. Um, you probably want an ad that's sending them directly to a to an Apple, um, a geographically sensitive link that will then send them to the right store, rather than sending them to somewhere where they they've got to do something else. Mm. yeah is it very different when you're doing ads uh, when you're in KU versus wide are there different kind of quite different strategies um not really um the only difference is that I mean KU is is a very big store in itself and it's probably it, at least it used to be I don't know whether this is true or not it was bigger than all of the other stores combined so Amazon and KU would be two very very big stores so it does make ads a little bit easier um if you're sending it to Amazon and you effectively that click then serves two different big audiences, it is it is easier to convert them. But on the other hand, um, the counter to that is not that many authors will be doing Facebook ads to to Apple or to Kobo, um, and in th things like on Kobo, for example, there's no no seventy percent limit at nine ninety nine. You could have a I used to have a mega box set of all of the Milton books that cost twenty five bucks. And Kobo would give me 70% of that, which was, you know, was really generous. And you can't do that on Amazon. Mm -hmm. So you suddenly have a huge margin to play with um, that you don't have anywhere else. So, you know, there are idiosyncrasies for all of the stores. Um, but um, we've, ads will work. Facebook ads will work for, for all of them mm -hmm. and audio as well. Yeah. Do you do you send your um, ads to full price books or do you, um, you know, lower the price for um no i never lower the price so um i mean apart from say a, a free uh incentive to join the mailing list that's not going to cost anything um but for no i would never almost never now and again maybe if i know i've got like a kindle daily deal and the, and the book's been dropped to to 99 and i'm getting 70 percent on that then mm -hmm. i might run some ads because that's a, you know that's still a pretty generous um slice and also it's going to increase the ranking which will probably lengthen the tail a little bit so i might push it a little bit harder but generally for the for ads i run i only really run ads to first in series or last in series right. um and i i wouldn't reduce that the first in series, first in series is already reasonably 
reasonably cost effective mm-hmm. that's slash cheap I'm, and i'm not gonna i'm not gonna cut that any more than it already is yeah. Yeah. so when you say last in series what's what's the theory behind that you've got another series you, one to go to or no, I, I'll serve those to people I know have read books, previous books in the series. So that it's a very, very, a very warm audience. I know they love the Milton books, for example. So um, they, they're going to be very reactive to the ad. They and they may not have known there's a new book out. They might have got mm-hmm. to it eventually, but perhaps not not for some time. Right. So I'll do um, I'll, those ads will go to a, an audience based on my mailing list or on um people who've interacted with my page or just any any kind of signals i i can detect that indicate to me that they are likely to be fans of my stuff so i i will i will send them notification of the new book is that your version of ads for for a launch or is that just do you do yeah yes if i was well launching for the last book in a, in a long existing series is pretty easy um, because I know I've been doing it for five, six years. It doesn't really change. It's just, as I've just described, it's just like that. If I was running, if I was going to have a new series with new characters, a fresh, you know, fresh trilogy, for example, um, I would, it would, it would be a bit different. I'd certainly cast a wider net. It probably wouldn't, it will, it definitely wouldn't just be my fans. I'd be looking at others in the genre that, that might be up for it. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, we've done some of that with James and I have a little imprint that we 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 publish maybe four or five other authors, and they won't all be thrillers. So there's the sci-fi, we've got a romance coming up. Um, and when when we launch those, we would would have a fairly comprehensive strategy that would encompass lots of different ways to reach readers, and it wouldn't just be um people I know would be interested in the book. I'd be more speculative for that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. That's cool. That's interesting. Can I ask you about text? What sort of copy do you put on your ads? Um, I would. I usually go short. So just um, I will often try to make sure it doesn't actually need to. It fits without anyone clicking the more button to expand it. I oh, often yeah. try. So that, that, wow. Not always, but usually, usually at the, at the moment I have. Um, but then looking at others, what others are doing. Again, this is from just kind of looking around this afternoon um a lot of them were putting first chapters mm. whole first chapters and then ending wow. with read you know read the rest in ku um which is is a pretty good way of doing it you know it's it's, it's taking the kind of the free um the free book the, the philosophy behind that tempting someone with you know i've done i did a, twi- a tweet have i done it yeah i did a tweet on first in siri or or, or free kind of inside incentives to 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 buy more of that thing from uh, you know people like Wrigley doing it with chewing gum in the mm. 1940s and um it's it's that principle it's kind of like here's a free sample I'm gonna I'm, and I'm gonna trust myself as a writer at, at beyond being just a marketer at this point and try and get you to be hooked by the time you reach the end of the sample and then you know that to get the rest you're gonna have to click and then go over to Amazon and download it in KU mm. um which you know, it, it, I I probably need to do a little bit of testing to see how if if that might work with thrillers as well because um it seems at the moment I'm seeing it a lot in romance. Mm. Yeah, as we all know, yeah. romance is the testing ground. Yeah. Have, <laughs> yeah. have you ever had any trouble with your accounts? Like a lot of authors have theirs shut down and. No, never. I think I've been lucky. I was going to say, are you holding onto a piece of wood there, Mark? Just yeah, to, guess, you know, yeah. or a magic, <laughs> I mean, you know, uh, yeah, a talisman. It's it's a tricky yeah, one, and I think it is. I'd... Mine are gone. Mine are gone now. So ads are not working. What's that? For me. My, my account. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. No. Yeah. I, we see. I, I think it's not common, but we do see it more these days than we have done, and mm-hmm. there's no real. The like problem it's is with both. Romance. Do you think yeah. like that's mm. it's a romance thing because they're getting a it's bit probably of e- it's easy to piss them off with, yeah. with images and things and they yeah. think and it's easier to mistake things for sexual content than yeah. for me with someone running around you know with a suit on running into the distance that's you know that's quite different. hard to mistake yeah exactly yeah. <laughs> it's probably, probably it's probably that it's also the people you hang around with you know if you if you're kind of if your friends are romance writers and you know you're you're going to see you might feel like it's a more prevalent than it is um yeah. but it is it's definitely a thing mm. it's definitely a thing and i think also it's not necessarily when you send them to for example your um 
book by book link you know if, um mm. it's not just your book image that that ai is reading it's also the other books and on that you know where the um also on the amazon lands, amazon, lands, yeah, on the page. amazon page itself and so it just things trigger it eh? yeah, yeah. that's I mean, that's a bit speculative i'm not really? convinced about that i don't know I, yeah i, I We've had I'm Wendy's, certainly not we had Wendy's tried ads. We had hers. Basically, it was like putting a, an image of a nun on the ad, and it still got <laughs> shut down for sexual content. Right. So the, it was our Mind theory. You, I think my name might have been just like, oh, this is this woman again. She's out. I think that's possible. I, I, yeah. I think, I think ac accounts will carry kind of historical data yeah. in terms baggage. of in terms of how, yeah, yeah to exact baggage. Exactly. I think that's very likely. I, I, I am not convinced that. Um, facebook's bots are going to go over to amazon and start analyzing that they might do i think there, there's some evidence they do a bit in terms of the kind of the to make sure the reader experience is is not quite is is what they expect but mm. you know i i don't know i i really don't know the answer to that no i think you've just got to be sent to coventry and wait out your time and then start up again yeah yeah, you know, yeah. that's all you can do really isn't it or get someone else to run your ads yeah that's also possible yeah exactly mm. Mm. yeah mm. and if you're starting up again just um, I would have a new, a fresh credit card or a fresh debit card yeah. too. Yeah, just absolutely. saying. Not... Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So definitely. Think if we're going to talk about images, then, so are there types of images that you've seen that work best over um, for for Facebook? I remember the back in the day, it was like not the professionally beautiful ones, unless. Uh, so yeah, that no, I think these these days, generally speaking, the ones that work best are the ones that look pro. Um, mm -hmm. but, you know, there's there's all, there'll always be exceptions to that, but generally speaking, you just if you look at the ads, the top twenty are running. They're all really yeah. nice. You know, they're 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 they're, they're professionally produced. They look good. Um, yeah. So I it used, did used to be the case. I one of the stories I told was Diane Capri took uh, took the course very early on, and she had a picture of she took an iPhone, I think, of like a palm tree. It was yeah. rubbish, and it yeah. and it really worked. So you know, yeah. <laughs> I always remember looking at that, going, "What is that? What?" How does that work? I know it's crazy. I, yeah, I think that's it's... actually a really good point to to kind of reiterate, though, that things have moved on. Um, the s sophistication of the audience, if you like, has moved on. We've all got phones now that can take better pictures than any of us ever had when we got married. <laughs> you know, there's a better, yeah. it's a bigger, you know, better quality photo. And I think as as consumers, we're now we've upped our game as well in terms mm. of not consciously but in terms of what we expect you know do you remember mm. you know back in the day the instagram filters and everything would look like something from a 1970s um corn <laughs> pick and now it's you know yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> so what about the yeah. um the facebook ads library do you use any of those photos you know how you can no. do when you're doing ads you never never okay no no i always use i always work with my designer I, I usually the deal i have with Stuart is i'll say um he'll give me the cover the, the pack shot and then he'll give me like a social media bundle of various images yeah. that i can use because i mean i i can't one of the we, we got john who i work with today with the kind of the video that we're doing tomorrow for our little expedition is how to do copy and images i i wouldn't know where to start you know, I am. I I would even struggle to re resize an image. I I kind of I'd rather hand that over to someone who knows what they're doing rather than me like, bundle around and make a tear mm. myself. Okay. <laughs> and and do you test multiple images, or you just take that one image and run with it? Yeah, you usually will. I mean, so things like dynamic creative in Facebook ads is, is worth testing now. So you, you basically Facebook will do the split testing for you. Um, so you maybe put five copy variations, five images, five headlines, and it will run those at scale and and try and find a combination that it thinks works best um and you know we we have seen some success with that um so it's again it's trusting it's trusting the machine mm -hmm. trusting its alg yeah. algorithm is quite sophisticated now it knows what it's doing um and sometimes it is a question of going okay well, i trust you to you can find the audience for me within these parameters and then you run a variation of this ad to that audience that, that works best and just basically say you know take my money i'll watch the other end and and, and hopefully mm -hmm. we find that, that, that those ads are working yeah and so dynamic creative is where um facebook pick up the ad they like the best and then drive drive the sales to that is that is that how they it, it will say it? it would yeah. so if you've got five images five headlines and five um Lips. you know whatever whatever yeah then it will go like number number two number four and number five and it puts those together in an ad and that's the ad it serves mm -hmm. 
So it's so clever. When you, it's when you get multiple there, ones, though, and sorry. it tests them out first, yeah. Wendy, so it's not just that it's... Yeah, yeah. yeah. no, no, I, I know that. I just was trying to work out, uh, yeah, yeah. But so if you get the ad that works the best, do you then duplicate it and then start again? Um, no, I'd probably let that run. So that, mm -hmm. that okay. dynamic creative is... So there's testing, split testing that you do manually, and then there's dynamic creative. So it's kind of the same, but what it will do is if you if you're trusting it to do it for you, it will pick the winner. And then you, the idea is you 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 step back and let it just yeah. run that ad. And it should it shouldn't run the variations or not much. It'll just do it'll do what it thinks is best. Mm. Mm. Oh, and then, okay. And but yeah. then you wouldn't look at that and go, okay, that's obviously the best creative, and then make another ad that's exactly no. the same. um probably not. Um, and you can get some interesting ideas, but it's I, I, unfortunately it isn't as easy as just going like okay, that's that worked in this particular test because uh, but it doesn't it may not work in another test because things some things are changing. So maybe the audience is changing. Even if you have if you've got two lookalikes, um, you know, or, or, or one lookalike, it, it it may be a slightly different going to different parts of the audience. Mm. So I think it's. I mean, I do a bit of both. I'll I'll do some dynamic creative and I'll do some that I'm testing myself and then run those, you know, kind of perhaps run them in tandem. Mm -hmm. A couple of years ago, video was, everybody was talking about video, video ads and mm -hmm. video, video everything. Um, is that still the case? Um, no, I think for Facebook, I think images are still mm -hmm. the best, which is great because that's the easiest for us. Um, yeah. But then you only need to, you know, video is very, very popular. It's, it's, you know, TikTok is definitely, definitely a thing now. We, we've, you know, we, I was a fairly slow to come to that. And, um, but I've seen, I don't know, 50, 60, 70 authors doing like exceptionally well now yeah. because they've, they've mastered TikTok. Um, so yeah, it's, I think if, if you like video, then I, I would take your video to TikTok, do it there. Um, yeah. if, if, if you're, if that's not your bag or you don't have time for it, then I would, probably look at i'd stay on facebook or am and amazon but probably you know ideally everything but we, we yeah. can't do everything yeah. <laughs> so well. if you really want to just increase you know do you think is the platform still to promote and to grow your grow your sales on is that facebook do you say yeah i mean um, facebook ads yeah as opposed um, to amazon ads and any other ads do you still think facebook is the one no, I, I don't. I think it does. There again, I don't think there is a kind of a one size fits all answer. And for me, at the moment, it's probably seventy thirty Amazon, Facebook. Um, but there will be times where it goes the other way. Um, so it just depends on. Well, it depends on lots of different things. But I'm always running ads on both of those platforms. The, just the amount of spend that I channel one one way or the other can can depend on circumstances. Yeah, the thing that always confused me about doing that, like when you're doing Amazon ads and Facebook ads, was the uh, the attribution over which of the platforms was actually causing the sales. Mm. Is there? Do you have? How do you do that? <laughs> well, face Facebook, you can. I mean, don't. There are some some. There are a couple of teachers who I don't have much time for. Who'll tell you that you, the only way that you can gauge whether it's working or not is to look at your dashboard. Um, but that's hopeless because it doesn't take into account any of the other things that you're doing. So it doesn't take into account kind of organic read through. It doesn't take into account people who just come across you coming from your your, your mailing list, your social organic social. It's really unsophisticated and and I think a bit dangerous. It's easy to lose money that way. So it is it is but it is possible. It's quite easy to to look at um, the traffic that you're sending to your Amazon page and work out what sales are being caught by each. So I have a massive spreadsheet that I do maybe once a week now. Um, and one of the tabs is Facebook, Facebook ads. And it would look at the various countries I'm running the ads in. And one of the, one of the tabs is Amazon ads and Amazon will report sales on Amazon, obviously on, on the Amazon ads dashboard, which mm -hmm. contrary to what some people tell you, you can trust it. Mm -hmm. um, it is, you know, <laughs> it, there's a, there's a 14 day attribution window. So if if I make a sale on Wednesday, I'll probably need to check it again two weeks ahead to make sure that it hasn't carried more sales. Because if, if if you see my ad on Wednesday and you don't buy it till Friday, but but you yeah. did click on the ad, that will be attributed to to the ad, which it should yeah. be because it's that was what caused the sale. Um, so yeah, Amazon can you know will will tell you and can be trusted. Um, Facebook, if you use an Amazon attribution link, will also tell you and and that also can be trusted. I mm -hmm. for me, that's that's the way I do it. Yeah, okay, that's cool. That's good to know. Do you still do all your own ads? 
Mark? Yeah, I do. I do. I wish I didn't have to, but I do. I do. We have someone for SPF. Um, so I mean, SPF is a, we we advertise really heavily. I mean, multiple thousands every month. Um, we have someone called Arnas in a, a Lithuanian guy who we've worked with for about five years. So he does all of the Facebook ads for SPF. He's really good. Um, but for everything else, no, for my books, it's just me and and. You know, people often say to me, I wish I could, is there an agency that you would recommend? And I, there is no one I would recommend. Yeah. And it's not because wow. there are there are, dishon- there are dishonest people who just take your money, definitely. Um, but there are honest people who will do their best. But the problem is, um, if they're running a business, they, they'll ha- your books will be just kind of units that they need to sell on a big spreadsheet. Lots of different authors, maybe, you know, 20, 30 authors, each of 20 or 30 books. They can't possibly understand that series like you do. Um, and the, and they can't mm. and they're not invested in sales like you are because they're they're making maybe a, a thousand dollars a month by way of a fee whereas you know so it's not it's not that important that they get con- yeah. consistent sales yeah so yeah I I, I think it's painful sometimes because you got to learn but you you got to do it yourself yeah, I think okay. totally agree mm, it's it is tough for some people that just don't it just their brains don't work that way you know and and yeah hello I'm one of them but you know it is <laughs> it is tough because there is a lot to do there, there is, is but it's uh, if uh, the way i look at it is, is this right pick pick what you you don't need to do it all mm. it's not possible so i don't do it all this just isn't enough time and it even if it looks really daunting like facebook for the first time is like it, can i swear on your podcast i don't know what you yeah are. totally yeah okay yeah, so holy holy fuck right it's yeah. it's, <laughs> it's it's so it looks so big and so confusing and so daunting mm-hmm. that it's kind of like you know I'm not doing this. I'm not, I'm not going to, I'm going to do something else. I'm going to do some writing kind of what I love doing. But the way I, the way I would address that and the way I tell people our course is like 30 hours long now for Facebook. It's like, how do you eat an, how do you eat a whale? Right? It's one bite at a time. Yeah. So just, mm-hmm. and there's no, you know, there's no race. You don't, it's not, it's not becoming, if you wait a year to master it, it's not going to become Facebook. It's not going to stop mm-hmm. working. You know, you're ready when you're ready. Mm-hmm. I was just going to say to yeah. Mark, one thing I my kind of gut feel um, is I've been running ads for um, author friends for a number of years and the machine learning or the AI is getting so much better with Amazon and with Facebook in terms of the automatic side of it. So it actually, yes. it, it, yeah. conversely, it is more complicated looking, but actually, you know, you can actually set up an automatic Amazon ad and it actually gets to people that should be yeah getting it. definitely yeah some of my best ads on, on amazon are auto ads um yeah that, that you know is it's one of those things amazon has the data i mean w- weirdly i i've worked with amg before so that's the kind of the big the, the kind of the you pay them a lot of money per month it was forty thousand dollars a month when i did it um <laughs> i know it's it's ridiculous it's a huge amount of money. i think it's fifty thousand now um oh, but wow. they they will they give you then um more time ta- well they they will they will do it for you and but then you kind of they'll peel the veil back a bit and you can see just how much data they've got um and you can start to you know send ads to people for example who it knows have bought a thriller within the last two months and within that two months they they bought another one they put it in their basket but they didn't check out mm-hmm. so you know wow. that kind of gra- wow. really granular detail yeah. um which we can't see um, when we do the self serve, uh, rather than their kind of white glove service. But it, that's it's that's there. just the that's there, and that's all that. That's just what I've seen. I mean, it's probably it's probably the tip of the iceberg. You know, I imagine yeah. that the, we know the reason Amazon is is as big as it is because it knows Amazon knows what we want. Mm. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, sometimes right. before we even know we want it ourselves <laughs> there it is yeah absolutely well, knows that we, we put that book in the basket and we didn't yeah want yeah to yeah, get yeah. Into yeah. It, but it's scary right yeah, yeah. Do, yeah. Um, does amazon edge work for if you if you're not in ku is it better in ku or is it it's definitely better because you're effectively getting two bites of the cherry um but yeah they do work absolutely for i mean you need to um for me, it's a little tricky because I, I I still run my ads as a vendor, so I I don't do my ads through the KDP platform. I've been I managed I was one of the authors who managed to sneak in before they closed oh, the loophole. Yeah. So the, there's pluses and minuses to that. Pluses I get some options that other authors don't get. Negatives are it doesn't it, it, KU reads are invisible. So 
I I kind of have to guess a little bit as to as to how that is working for that. Um, so if you're in if you're going through the KDP portal, you you'll you a couple of years ago they obviously they added the the KEMPC data so you could start to work that out. Um, but yeah, I mean if if obviously it's the same principle. If you're running ads to to Amazon. There's a very, very big market who are in KU who will probably only buy or only borrow KU books most mm. of the time. Yeah. As, a, as an author, you often get emails from people saying, is that book going to be in KU? You know? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Frustrating. <laughs> it is It is frustrating, you know, but, I, for, you know, for me, I've kind of, I'm, I'm used to it now. And I mean, KU is probably 40% of my market now. Yeah. Um, and, and, you know, if you're in romance, it might even be, 60 40 in favor yeah, of KU. And I've, I've seen higher than that. Yeah. Mm. yeah. 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 Definitely. Definitely. So I think we've asked all our questions just about, haven't we? Almost. Almost. I've always got more, Wendy. I've always I know more. we have, Trudy, but you know. <laughs> so is there, is there a, um, if you're thinking of all the different types of Facebook ads that you can run in terms of like to, um, to gather mailing list or to, is there one that's better to be doing than others? Or if you're just starting out, where would you start maybe? Is, um, I, I would probably be looking to build my audience with, with kind of to build my mailing list. Um, I think that's really important. Um, it, and it also depends on how many books you've got. I mean, if you've got, we, we have, but we have been able to make run ads to one book and make a profit on that. James has done that with his first in series when he just had one. So he's making, making a small profit and building his audience effectively and getting paid a little bit to do that, which is, is great. Um, but if you're going to be running ads at a higher volume, then I would say wait until you've got two or three books because, you know, then the read through becomes relevant mm. and that makes it a lot easier to, to make the ads profitable. But, you know, one of the things that we're doing this, we're doing this challenge at the moment and getting comments just today from authors seeing the first couple of videos and saying, I've, I've just, I haven't written, I've not finished yet. Should I be running ads? And obviously you can't run an ad to sell a book that doesn't exist, but what no. you can do is, is to start investing at a, a small level and start to build an audience. So when the book is ready to release, then you have, you're not just kind of chucking it out into the void and crushing your fingers. Yeah. You, you have an audience that, you know, if you've been targeting your ads correctly, like the kinds of books that you're writing mm -hmm. um so yeah I, I and then i think that 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 strategy is something that you can just effectively put on autopilot and just let it run over time um just build keep building the list yeah okay so can you do you leave ads just running indefinitely have you ever done that oh often yeah i mean the, the one of the ads i'm running at the moment i'm doing because of my attica series is based in salisbury where i am and um i've I've got an ad that, that runs to people in Salisbury and 25 miles around because very like a hyper local ad. And I've been running that at $10 a day for about six months. Wow. So it's, it's, it's chalked up a decent ish spend, you know, maybe three or $4,000, but it is, it is working, you know, and I'm, I'm happy to just kind of let that chug away until, until it doesn't work anymore. Mm. That wow. reminds me, sorry, I'm going back and I'm just because I want to put in, so you're doing $10 a day on an ad. Do you, do you, when you want to put up the budget, you go, oh, this ad is doing really well. Do you just amp up the budget on that ad mm, or do you no. create a new ad? Um, you have to, that's quite technical. Um, okay. So <laughs> what, sorry. what I would, as a rule of thumb, I can give kind of a quick rule of thumb. I would say okay. if you've got an ad that's working, I would increase it about 20% mm -hmm. every other day. So just kind of just gradually increase it. It is it's possible to throw an ad back into the learning phase if you if you up the spend too quickly and get too greedy, it can screw it up. Um, so I'd do that, and also you can duplicate the ad and 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 start another ad at this at a at a low level, and then just do the same with that one. And eventually, obviously, you know, if if that if you if you're compounding over time, that can get get to a decent spend quite quickly. Mm. And if you're spending ten dollars a day on that particular ad, for example, does that mean you have lots and lots of ads? You're not like running three ads. You're running. Is that um, could it? Oh well, I mean, it could ten dollars a day on that one ad? Yes, I mean, I, I there have been days I've spent five hundred to a thousand dollars a day on Facebook ads. Not not for a little while, but I, I have done. Um, Amazon at the moment is is that's probably where most of the budget is going. But um, yeah, it can definitely switch around. Mm. Yeah. So yeah, but it was always just look at look at the ads library. It's always a good idea. I mean, you know, I should got someone the other day. I saw one of the one of the forms I don't mention anymore because it's the cesspit of 
negativity and unpleasantness. Um, they were like, well, Mark Senning is Corsican. I looked on the ads manager. He's only running two ads. Like, well, mm. yes, I am. But what you don't know is that for, at the moment, for for strategic reasons, I'm running more on, on Amazon. But if you look in, in another month, I'll probably be running m- many more on Facebook. So, mm. you know. You people just really love know. to moan though mark right people love they do to moan. They, <laughs> they do, do. i mean so, you could serve everything up gold plated to them and they'd still want it and silver you know like i mean it's just the way they go it, yeah it's just life isn't it but you know yeah, so yeah, it is Gen- generally people are you know people are generally not like that but there's always there's always a few always yeah. a few so mm, one, one last question before i let you go you know with you she'll just keep hammering you we'll just, just shut her down like, <laughs> she's, all she's the one she we just can't <laughs> stop her <laughs> um so so there's always there's a um the story that goes around it's going around now is that you can't make it as an author or a oh. self-published author without ads these days do you think that's true yeah, yeah unfortunately i do yeah. yeah yeah i think when i started my, my the way i kind of i've been doing this for 10 years now and when i started you you probably couldn't advertise because or not easily um because there were there were very few venues that were, were would work for us and then got to a stage where you you didn't have to advertise, but it was a quite good idea because it was easy and the money you could make a lot of money quite quite quickly. Um, but over the last five years or so, as you know, you know the the books in the Kindle store have gone up. There's I think eleven million now, something like that. Um, and authors are savvier. They've taken courses by idiots who make courses for other authors, you know, and make it <laughs> listen difficult to podcasts. The, uh, listen to, listen to podcasts. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. It's so it's so much easier to learn now than when, than when I started. Um yeah. I think because because of all those reasons, it is it's not impossible that you 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 kind of get lucky and get a lightning strike. But I can't really remember the last one. And uh, yeah, Andy Weir maybe mm. for the Martian. There's probably been a few kind of a few then I just haven't noticed, but it's very difficult and I don't think you can leave it to luck anymore. But I mean, the, on the other hand, the flip side is there are lots and lots of ways to get the word out now that weren't available before from mm. book bub ads to, to Amazon ads. And that, TikTok. you know, when I started yeah. to yeah, TikTok and uh, things are always changing and things like, you know, we haven't even, I'm probably don't have time now to talk about things like AI and chat mm-hmm. GPT and stuff like that. They're really, I'm finding them quite useful for some things that, you know, we're, we're just kind of space age. And, you know, mm. when I started, Absolutely. Um, yeah. So yeah. You know, it's you know it's, it is you you can I suppose I'm I'm glass half full most of the time. So I, I kind of look at it as like okay these are opportunities that I didn't have available to me before mm. that I can take advantage of now. Mm. Um, but on the other hand, did I did I start at the right time? Probably. You mm. know it was it yeah. was easier in those days. So I've had a bit of a head start, but you know, but you, you you can you can still come from nowhere and do really well really quickly. Mm-hmm. I hope you see it all the time. Mm. People yeah. are still what, starting what? out and doing really well. We yes. we have them on the podcast. Mm. We you know mm. it's, it's yeah. not too late either. Basically, yeah, we we, we had a good product. Yeah. We- Absolutely. Yeah. We we do every year, round about this time actually, we have what we call the foundation. So we give out all of our courses and quite a lot of money, six or seventy thousand uh, dollars, but to, to people who've applied because they need a, a little bit of help. They they've written good books, but they don't have the budget or the savvy to to mm-hmm. kind of get it out there. And we've had a couple of authors go from like like um Elle Thorpe was was one of ours and she was oh. um she was nearly lost her house. She was like very, very close to having the mortgage foreclose on her. Um she's sixty grand a month now, you know, and mm. and, nice. and, and that's um, that, in eighteen months maybe, which yeah. is kind of ridiculous. But uh, that is definitely possible. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. yeah. That's right. So tell us about the course and what you've got, what you're offering. Yeah, so um, we have lots of courses with SPF. When is this? When's this going out? Do you know? Two weeks. When's two weeks? Okay, so you'll just be within the. Well, you actually be right in the middle of the the launch period for ads for authors. So we do it twice a year. Um, so it's our main course with with Facebook, Amazon, BookBub, TikTok, and quite a lot of other ancillary content. You know, copywriting, image design, all that kind of stuff, um, and. Yeah, that so that's that's our main course. That's that's will be it. If you go to selfpublishingformula.com, you'll find links to that. Uh, we also have 
we used to call it 101, which we now changed it to Launchpad. So it's our kind of introductory to intermediate course on self-publishing. Um, and that will be available later in the year. And we've got some other courses that are available all the time. Plus, you know, the podcast, obviously not as good as yours, but, um, you know, we... <laughs> well, who is? I, I feel like, I feel like yours and ours are probably the longest ones along with yeah. Joanna, yeah. to be honest yeah. with Joanna, you. Still Joanna going. makes us... Joanna makes yeah. us all look young. Yeah. She's yeah. been doing it for her. Joanna so never ages either, though. So, you know, <laughs> <laughs> she's got a Benjamin Button thing going on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> there's, there's, a, there's a picture in her attic, actually. Uh, I, I've seen it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so, no, it's, yeah, we, we, we do it. Our podcast goes out on Fridays. But, yeah, there's loads. Of, we, you know, there's loads. You know, people might not want to listen to two middle-aged English blokes you know, waffling on about nothing. And would rather find someone else. There's so many good ones now. Um, I four New Zealand I, women talking about <laughs> nothing, yeah. nothing. But getting back to the course, the course is well worth your time. It's great, yeah. but it's the resources yeah. in there. There's so many things in there. You know, the Amazon ads is, a, you know, it's just it's a great resource. Yes, it's not yeah, just we, Facebook. It's everything. Yeah. No, it's big. We always one of the things we 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 try very hard to do to differentiate ourselves from other people is to make sure it's always kept up to date. So yes. and that can that can be a real pain in the ass. Yeah, when Facebook yeah. changes something radical and we have to re record everything, which they do, yeah. right? Yeah. Like Amazon, they, do, they, they haven't for a while, so that's probably you know, because oh. we, we, we should just put that out there, Mark. <laughs> I know, yeah, Mark Zuckerberg, somebody's like, aha, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah